what is the very best method of repairing your clothes if they've got holes? Today, we're gonna find out. But not like in a scientific testing sort of way, no, purely subjective, my own opinion. And then you guys can let me know in the comments whether it's something that you agree with or mm, not so much on my thinky thoughts. But first, a little scenario for you. Imagine that you are getting dressed in the morning, putting on an outfit, you notice, oh no, there's a hole in your clothing that you're gonna wear today. And do you then do the thing that you should, which is, take it off and put it into your pile to be repaired and put on something else for the day? Or do you do what I tend to do, which is wear it anyway, but think to yourself, oh dang, I should repair this later. And then six months goes by and what was a teeny tiny hole is huge. The phrase, a stitch in time saves nine is very true. I'm mostly telling you this to let you know that a lot of the repairs you're gonna see me doing today are a little egregious. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're things I should have tended to before now, but that's okay. Better now than never. So let's go ahead and do some repairs and see which one's the best. So this is a repair that I've actually already started months ago, uh, <laughs> but we're gonna go ahead and get back to it today. Now you can see I already did the toe here and I've got a very similarly large hole hiding underneath of this. You should not wait until your your holes get this big to think about repairing them, but I was lazy, so we're gonna, we're gonna fix this. Now, you'll notice that I did use a white thread for this. These are wool socks, and this white wool thread was all I could think of to match that hole fiber-wise, but not necessarily color-wise. Uh, and that's okay, like it's in the shoe, no one's gonna see it, it's fine. Uh, but I also remembered that I had gotten and tucked away this very lovely thin sock yarn that has been rainbow dyed, it's very pretty because, and I did buy this specifically for doing repairs on wool things. Cause I figure rather than buying 20 plus different colors and trying to match each of them to specific things, uh, I decided I will match none of them. And, it, but it'll look very, very pretty, <laughs> no matter what I put it on, so it's fine. It's gonna be great. So I'm gonna use this on this, and I'm gonna use my fancy, fancy little speed weave. First, I've gotta convert the skein to a ball really quick. So that only took two and a half hours. At least it's a very, very pretty ball. So to use my little speed weave toy here, first we're going to disassemble it by taking the rubber band here out, separating out the wooden disc, and putting that inside of our sock, like so. Not only is this hole huge, I can also see by following the lines of the, the knit here that it's also sort of splayed out. So this whole hole is very stretched out. I think I'm gonna try and do some gathering stitches around it to try and control that, that stretch just a bit and it's gonna also make it a lot easier for us to weave over top. That is looking a lot less stretched out. So now that I've kind of stabilized the area, this is not normally something that I do, but normally the I don't let the hole get so bad. So now that we have our, our hole ready to work on, and you may have noticed there's a second one here, but I will do that after. Let's take care of the big one first. So we're gonna just pop that on the top. A rubber band is gonna go over and down around the disc. I've added a little guide thread here at the bottom to help make sure that I'm coming down to approximately the same spot each time. That, just putting that in there to begin with helps out. And then this thread, we're gonna start off just kind of randomly way off on the side here, and then come up just below our guide thread. I'm using a doubled up thread because I feel like this thread is just a little bit too thin versus the thread that's naturally used in the sock. So I'm hoping that'll give it the right amount of heft by doubling it. Then gonna come just straight on up. So this is essentially a very tiny little loom. 
And you do not have to use one of these, but it can certainly be very, very handy if you do happen to have one. There's a lot of vintage ones around, but you can also get some new ones these days, I think over on Etsy. I'll try to add some links to the description down below so that you guys can check that out if you're in the market for a modern version of a speed weave. This one I think is a vintage one, question mark? Maybe not, I am I do not recall. I just know that I did for sure get it on Etsy many years ago and it has been a little cutie that I do not get to use nearly enough. I am all the way at the very, very end here. I think I can maybe sneak just one more row in if I really work my needle into the end there. Now we can go ahead and wiggle this thing off. We're just gonna take off the rubber band first. Boop. And then put our hooks forward and scoop them out. So now we are connected all along the sides and along the bottom and not yet connected in the top. So let me go ahead and stitch that down real quick. That is pretty dang cute, I will say. I am still not perfect. You can see how wibbly wobbly <laughs> this edge is, but the thread effect, very cute. To clean up the inside of our repair, we're gonna turn the sock inside out so that we can see the lovely interior of the sock. And then all of your threads, you're gonna pull them to this side so that we can work on getting them tucked in. If you have any that aren't already pullable from the inside, go ahead and do a bit of needlework so that we can then pull them in. Now we're gonna take each of these and sort of weave them into the rest of the sock. The trick with weaving in some of these threads is that you'll notice the needle I'm using here is actually longer than the thread itself. You can sort of pre-weave your needle into wherever you're gonna, you're gonna nest that thread, which is what I'm gonna do for this one. So I'm just doing a little bit of back and forth, but trying to make sure that I'm not going too deeply. I just wanna work in the black of the sock and not dig all the way out to the front. And then we can thread our little bit of hanging threads through and then pull that out. Ta-da! Okay, give it a little bit of stretch. Now we can go ahead and just cut this one off. And then since I have an extra long thread here to tuck away, rather than just simply burying it and cutting it off, I'm gonna go ahead and use this to start doing some of my interior repairs. In this case, normally I would just do a couple of threads spanning the width of a hole, but this is so big <laughs> that that would just leave really huge threads hanging all over the middle here. So instead, I'm gonna try and weave this edge here into the fabric that I've made on the front just a little bit. This whole area of the sock is kind of like a little flap or a little pocket because it's only actually connected to the fabric at the outside at these stitches here. So what I wanna do is basically secure down this flap a little bit. See now how I've just done very loose stitches, definitely making sure I'm not pulling it super tight as I'm going because that is gonna distort the very lovely, pretty patch that we have on the outside, but it's just enough to help secure things down. And fortunately, because all of this is wool thread, fingers crossed, it should over time just kind of felt down into the patch. So these two fibers should marry together pretty nicely after a bit of time. And that is, that is one of the nice things about specifically repairing wool. Now that I finished doing that nice big hole, we should also tend to this little guy right here. I ended up doing a, I think it's called a Swiss darn, where you do a stitch that kind of mimics the way that the knit stitch is in the item. I did not do a good job, but I tried. <laughs> uh, and it was, it was always fun to give it a try and up my very meager skill. Next up, I have a sheet here with some lovely holes <laughs> that need to be fixed. I'm not entirely sure how the holes got here since the rest of the blanket's perfect, but I do have my theories. Let's just say we're very crafty people with a lot of tools and accidents happen. 
that's okay. We're going to get this fixed up so that it is happy and lovely. And I was trying to decide which one I wanted to do because there's always lots of options when it comes to mending. And Mr. Donner really likes the stars that I have here and said it'd be super cute to do a little starry sky situation on this because it's several small holes all next to each other. So I think I am going to do just that, which first we're going to take a little bit of heat and bond because that's going to make this a lot easier. You can do it without, but so much easier with this. I'm going to take a piece of this and draw out some stars on the paper side of the heat and bond. I think I'm going to go for the four pointed sparkle type stars rather than your more standard five pointed star. But we're going to do a few of those in different sizes and then I'm going to iron them down onto some white linen fabric. That way it'll be the same material as the sheet itself because these are my, my lovely linen blankets. Once this little piece of paper is ironed on and left to cool for a moment or two, we can cut out that sparkle shape. Now I'm going to first set this onto my ironing board and get it nice and ironed and flat and lovely so that we can really get all those little fibers in the holes as nicely laid out and unbunched up as possible. And then from here, we can start ironing it directly onto where it looks good on the blanket itself. Then we're going to go ahead and take this over to the sewing machine and pop on a satin stitch, kind of like a really close zigzag stitch, and just go really nicely over the edges to help meld them down because you the iron is going to help hold things in place temporarily but that'll absolutely wash away without a little bit of further reinforcement so we're going to stitch down the edges so that our sparkles are nice and lovely and stay exactly where they're supposed to be my little sparkle patches are looking pretty dang cute if i do say so myself now they're covering up the larger tears or holes but there's some little tiny ones here that i feel like I don't need a whole patch for. Instead, I'm going to do some cute little embroidery eyelets. So working it just like you would an eyelet for like historical costuming stuff, but in kind of a star shape, because I think that'll be really cute. And what an eyelet does is make it so that a hole can't grow, right? Like it does reinforce that area. So let me go ahead and get to embroidering. <laughs> I really, really love these sheets. I think I've had them now for almost two years and there are usual like constant sheets on the bed. And it's always a race on wash day to take them off, get them washed and dried and put back in all on the same day because I'm a silly goose. That's okay though, because I actually have, thanks to the sponsor of today's video, a new set of sheets that I am cozily sitting on right now. These are from Brook Linen, which is also where my favorite sheets are from. I love their linen stuff, but I'm also a curious cat, so I wanted to try out one of their other sets. I got the Lux, which is like one of their best-selling versions. Brooklinen sells lovely luxury sheets that you can get at home, and they have these really great bundle systems where you can save 20% more than if you were to buy the items individually one by one. It includes a core set, it includes extra pillows and a duvet cover. And what's really, really cool is on the website, you can choose Choose which parts you want to be what colors. They've got a bunch of different color options, including some new ones that they just put out. Check out the limited edition ones because there's there's some very fun ones. I did go for a much more like muted sort of look because Mr. Donner recently got me these beautiful greyhound prints and I thought it'd be really cool if I tried to match the sheets to that look. I got the window pane set, had that nice grid to try and mimic the grid-like look of my new birthday wall art and I just feel like it's a nice new start for the year to, to give it some new sheets and to help me cycle through not just using one set of sheets always. I figure I can go back and forth with a little bit less rush <laughs> now that I've got another set. And I, I'm just, I'm excited. I, I love the, the sateen. Feels very nice and is 
clearly very cozy and fun to hang out on. You are making it very hard for me to embroider. Brooke Lennon is offering my viewers, that's you, $20 off any order over $100. Just use my link down in the description or you can use my code, which I'll put right there. I hope you guys get some lovely sheets that match your vibe. I think you guys will enjoy it. Right. I have a bunch more stars to embroider. Not because I need to. I only had two holes, but I, I'm I want to have fun with making a, like a whole constellation because a constellation is more than just a couple stars, right? So I want to embroider several to get a full look and I'm excited. I think it's going to be really, really cute. Next up is a set of hose or medieval-ish pants. They're of that kind of middle tri seam style you can see the three seams there in the center back but you'll notice there is unfortunately a lovely hole right here on the inner thigh area i have actually already patched it previously but that patch got completely ripped through and more than doubled oh that is that is a big old tear now uh, apparently my repair job previously is just nothing against the mighty mighty thighs of Mr. Donner when he's fencing. So let's see if I can make a new patch that's going to be hopefully even stronger <laughs> and see what we can do to prevent this tearing in the future. I don't know if you can tell but it's right along the grain here is where this particular tear is. Whenever I see that it makes me always want to check for something which is somewhere along that same piece of fabric and along that same grain line. I'm just going to pick a spot and see if I can by hand rip that spot open. I'm not going crazy. I'm not trying to hulk out, but just can I with hand strength alone tear it open? And it seems like I can't. I'll go try a different spot just to be thorough uh, because I've had items before where it would tear along the grain and I would repair it and I realized that it just almost immediately started bursting new tears <laughs> because the fabric itself had like rotted. Oh, I don't, there's something wrong with it. But now, not going to fool me twice, I always check now to verify that it's not the fabric's just time to go. No, the rest of the fabric seems nice and strong. So we're going to see what we can do to repair this. More than likely, this is probably a patterning error. I guarantee that someone out there, you know, whenever there's like a funny wrinkle here, I feel like there's people who can say, oh yeah, yeah, that's because there's too much fabric right here. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I, I can't do that. I just patch and pray. The first thing that I'm gonna do with this pair is take out all of this old stitching and the, the old patch. I was, briefly tempted to leave it in because I think it's really cool how some of the few medieval extant tunics we have that have patching visible on them, at least one of them has several different patches kind of layered together in a way that is clearly done as patches over time rather than here's how it was constructed in the first place. Anyways, I thought about leaving the patch for that like intentionally as part of this look, but no, nah, I think that what I want to do is be able to clean up all these kind of rough edges that we've got just all over the place. And I think it's going to be a lot easier if we just get rid of this old one. Next, I'm going to make a new patch out of a similar, but not quite the same wool as what the hose are made out of, but I think it'll, it'll have to do because it's what I have. We want the new patch to be approximately one inch bigger on all sides. So a little bit bigger there. And then here's the bottom of the tear, ma'am. So about an inch below that. And then same thing on the sides here. So a little, this bit of the fabric is just about right. I'm going to clean up all the edges and make it square and come right back. I have my little patch prepared and I've also cleaned up around the edges of the tear itself, not necessarily worrying about getting an absolutely pristine, fluffy sort of edge, but at least getting some of the, the longest little straggly threads away. Next, we're going to take this guy and put it inside. I could 
flip the pants inside out, but I'm going to be stubborn and not do that. Instead, we're just going to kind of gently get this situated. And I'm going to kind of feel around to check how centered my patch is, which is not very yet. That feels about right. And normally when I'm repairing something, I'm going to try and make it so that in a long tear like this, the opening is approximately the same size it was to begin with. But since this is the second tear in this particular spot, I'm going to give it just a hint of breathing room. Almost like I'm adding a little itty bitty fish shaped sort of gusset to, to give it just, just a little more room, like an anti-dart. And once I'm happy with my placement, I'm going to grab some pins and just start pinning away. Right now I am going through all layers. Now that I've got that pinned in place, I find it a little easier to start adjusting the pins one by one because of all its its little friends are already nicely secured in and I can use my hand to start detaching it from the, the back layer here if I hold on to it, kind of like so. I can feel between the two fabrics, making sure that I'm just grabbing what I want and replace the pin. If I try to do this from the get-go, just, you know, kind of in the air like this, I feel like once I then put it back down flat again, it's always gone a little cattywampus and no longer the nice flat that I'm trying to aim for. From this point, I probably could jump straight into just stitching up all these little sides, especially if you don't mind the raw edges being out like this. But I think I am going to go ahead and pre-tuck these in just a smidgen. Of course, I say that, but there's a seam allowance here, so it's bulky there. You're always going to have funny spots anytime you're doing something like that's kind of the funny thing about looking at a book showing how to do a, a patch or something else because they're doing a nice little tiny hole right in the middle of a big flat thing. And of course, they never have seams in the way or anything, but that's OK. We are we are here to figure it out as we go. This is all pinned in place and ready to go. And I also did a little bit of a test on what sort of thread I wanted to use. I have several different reds and you can kind of see here that the top three are pretty visible, but this bottom one is dang near invisible on camera. It's, it's in there, but it is really, really hard to see. I think part of that is just the fact that it's the thinnest thread. So it's by virtue of being tiny, <laughs> really hiding in the background there. But that's probably going to be my go to thread for this one, because this one's going to be a slightly less overly decorative, visible sort of patch. The first round of stitching is going to be just right in the very edge to secure that really tidily and neatly to the patch fabric underneath. Then I'm going to do kind of a prick backstitch, a not all the way very visible sort of backstitch, which the backstitch part is what helps give it just a little bit of elasticity, which is nice on a, a patch to keep it from ripping out. And then I did on the inside, we just went ahead and folded all of our edges back and gave those another sort of rolling back stitch to keep everything in place. So right now there are three lines of stitching holding all of this together. And that is actually, I think, where I messed up with my previous patch is I got lazy and I just did the first two. I secured kind of the front half, but I didn't bother doing this part. And part of what makes a patch strong is that you have these two layers right here, both holding on to each other really well. And so I was less lazy this time. What would be even better, and I think I'm going to go ahead and do, since I do feel like this is a high stress sort of garment is I'm going to add another layer of stitching right next to the first one here. I'm really hoping that that'll make it so that it's nice and strong. And I was really kind of hoping to add a decorative element to this. I thought it would have been super cute to turn this into a fish, like add a little eyeball there, a little fin and a little fin and a little tail right here. 
would have been so cute. Uh, but Mr. Morgandana was like, I don't want to fish on my pants. So <laughs> I guess let's just go ahead and do that last row of stitching around and then get to something else more fun. Next up is a dress where the waist tie has met a very unfortunate incident in the washer dryer. I think that some stitch must have come undone and then unfortunately the fabric is now just fraying out like crazy. So I think to repair this one I'm going to need to completely seam rip open the side seam here, remove this strap and probably trim it down by half an inch or more just to get it completely clean slate. And then we're gonna try and build back up this area of fabric right here in the side where it's worn away. It's gonna be a lot of <laughs> careful trimming and weaving. I really, really loved the way that the rainbow uh, embroidery thread looked on the socks. So I think it'll be very fun to put that here. It's gonna be kind of tucked away on the side. So I feel like it's, gonna be cute whenever I see it but not loud enough to annoy me does that make sense so I I think that'll be fun I'll, I'll make my little embroidery repair situation here I'm I'm kind of tired of the patches I want to go back to weavy embroidery type stuff I finished reweaving this little missing corner that got all torn up and I think it turned out pretty dang well. Normally if I were filling in a torn away hole, I wouldn't necessarily need a backing fabric, but because this is going to be on a side seam with not only the pressures of it being a seam, but also additionally the pressures of the, the ties pulling on that seam, I felt like a bit of extra reinforcement was called for. So next up, I'm going to trim away the excess bit of fabric that isn't woven in as part of the repair. And then we can go ahead and attempt to get this all sewn back in together now that the fabric is rewoven into place. I did a little bit of extra stitching on the end of the strap on the machine, just some zigzagging to help really reinforce that edge that had torn out before then tucking it into the side seam and stitching that down in place. I not only stitched the edges to each other, but also did lots of tacking through all the layers of fabric just to really try and reinforce the whole area. That turned out pretty dang well, if I do say so myself. I wasn't sure that I'd be able to pull off the like woven fabric look with how much fraying there was, but that's not bad. I'm, I'm pretty pleased. We'll have to see how well I've successfully reinforced it when it comes to wearing it and washing it from now on. But yeah, I'm excited. I think it's very cute. I love the very light little decorative touch that doing the rainbow thread adds, but I do think, I feel like I want more. And for my next one, I've got one, one last dress to repair here. It's the one with the big hole right in the center front here. I decided to go with a floral motif for my mending slash embroidery here. I figured that a nice big flower with the center as the part that actually needed the mending would work really well because I, I feel like that could give me a lot of interesting texture for the middle and then I can just have fun doing whatever I want with the petals. First though, let's tackle the mending. I'm gonna do that same back and forth weaving kind of technique that I did on some of the other stuff. I feel like this is such a good go-to technique for repairing things. It's usually nicely integrates with the fabric so that even if you do a terrible job at it, which I'm certainly not amazing, but no matter how badly you do, it's still gonna repair the, the tear. It's gonna fix the thing that needs fixing. So I, I really like this one. It, it's hard for it to go wrong. For the petals, I decided to go for a Bayou Tapestry style stitch where you do a kind of faux satin stitch to lay down the groundwork of your thread, the, the color of it. It's primarily on the front. That's why I do these gaps is so I can go back and forth without having as much strain near the very end of where the thread is going through. There's just a bit more bite to the fabric if you can do a slightly bigger stitch. But I go back and forth until I've got it nicely covered and then lay down another row of stitches on top with tacking 
stitches between that or um, couching is another way to say that. So that way it kind of holds the threads down. I'm really, really hoping that this will hold up well in the wash, uh, fingers crossed. If it doesn't, not the end of the world. I can cut it out and add more or do something new not the end of the world, but I think it's really, really fun to get the chance to do some embroidery stitches that I just don't, t I don't, there's something about embroidery that I love it so much, but I think that because it takes so long, I rarely find a project that makes me want to sit down and dedicate a lot of time to do just that. But that's what's really great about mending is that you can do just cute little embroidery things. Like I also did some flowers on the side here and it was just fun. It's really, really fun to <laughs> use embroidery as a repair method slash a way to disguise your repair if you want to think of it that way. Now that I finished my final bit of mending, now it's time for the extra fun part judging them. <laughs> so the socks are first up on the list. I did the same technique on both ones, just different yarns. And the the rainbow yarn is too gorgeous. I, I can't get over it. But that said, I'm still going to rate it just 8 out of 10 because it is texturally kind of not the best. I don't mind too much having differences of texture underneath my feet while I'm walking, but like I notice it and I think that some people would really, really not like this. The white one is the same problem texture wise, but not even as cute. And the weaving is a lot looser on this one because I think I got better <laughs> as I went on. And so it's, it's functional enough. I'm going to give it like a four out of 10. That little tiny bit of Swiss darning that I did. You can kind of see it right there. I'm going to give it a 5 out of 10. I think that in somebody else's hands, Swiss darning can absolutely be a 10 out of 10. Like I have seen people do just gorgeous work with Swiss darning because it is so nicely integrated in with the, the fibers of the original object. It can be fantastic. I'm just not very good at it. <laughs> so it's always a little bit chunky and a little bit not the right gauge of threads. Like I'm getting there, but I'm not there yet. Now for our duvet cover stars, I feel like that style of patch is very, very clean and modern feeling with all that machine stitching around the edges, but it's also I don't know, it, it lacks a little bit of that touch of the maker that I tend to like in things. So while it's very clean and nice and very fast, I will say, I think I'm going to go for a 6 out of 10 on the, the linen patches. Now the little embroidered stars, very, very cute, especially if your repair is truly a tiny little like snag or something that's a good one and i feel like you could do variations you could do like a five pointed star you could do a flower you can do things that are different than what i did design wise so you have some flexibility there which is very fun and i i think it's very hand of the maker esque like it's very like anything with embroidery i feel feels very hand done in a way that I think is really lovely. So I think I'm going to go a little higher, a little seven, seven out of 10 on the, the embroidered stars. Now for our medieval hose here with the, the leg tear, honestly, I don't love it. I think, I think I'm going to go three out of 10 on this one. It's beautifully functional. I don't think it's going to rip again anytime soon, unless the fabric itself is really unhappy, but the repair part, I think I've done very functionally well, but aesthetically, it's really not there for me. I wish that it was either leaning more into the decorative fun side of things, like maybe with more embellished stitches, like that fish design that I joked about, you know, something. Or I wish it had gone more invisible. Like it's not really invisible, but if it had been the same color fabric, I think I would have 
rated this higher. I just don't have anything that's quite exactly the same color as this. Yeah, not my favorite of the batch. On the other end of the spectrum though, 10 out of 10. I think this is a fantastic repair. I love that it's a cute little decorative touch with the rainbow embroidery, but I also feel like it's really nicely, in a practical way, integrated in with the fabric. I've really, really, I feel, done a good job of reinforcing this area while still maintaining the overall look of the garment as it's supposed to be. I just, I really, really like how this turned out, and I was nervous with how much of the fabric had dis disintegrated away in the wash. Like, I think that turned out pretty dang good, and I feel like it's going to be nice and strong and able to withstand tying as I wear it. Like, I like this one. 10 out of 10. And last but certainly not least is the embroidery on this pink dress. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to go 9 out of 10. I feel like... I tried to keep in mind that this is going to go through the wash a lot in the future, so I tried to do a repair that was really nice and strong, but also keeping in mind a way to make it decorative, and I tried to make it so that the stitches were something that I think is going to withstand well in the wash. I also tried to make sure that the inside was not super crazy <laughs> with uh, long stitches that might get caught on things. That's, that's my hope. I also did a cute little repair on the side here where the threads had torn away the sides where it was sewn. I ended up repairing that and reinforcing it really nicely. And I think I want to actually do the same thing on this side, even though it hasn't torn on this side. I think that that reinforcement is going to really keep this area nice and strong for hopefully a long time to go. And I, I, I might as well do the same thing so that this one stays nice and happy. I go back and forth on whether or not I wish that I had made this centered or not. My idea was like to make it asymmetric so that I can start asymmetrically adding more decorations on purpose and just enjoying embroidering a piece that's been dedicated to letting that happen. But with just the one flower currently on there, I can... Mm, I can see how it looks a little bit funny that it's not centered, but I think it's still pretty dang cute, especially if you just kind of squint so you can't tell that it's off center. I also really, really like that I made it so that the petals fade into the fabric color itself, which means that the flower looks like it belongs on the fabric. Like, I don't do a ton of embroidering, but uh, I really enjoyed the chance to do it for this especially. I had a lot of fun with this one. I also, I think I really, really love the weaving technique. I feel like that really beautifully integrates the fabric that's torn in with the repair and makes it so that it's one very happy whole, as opposed to like just a, a band-aid tossed on top. Whatever the rating, I'm glad that I got all of the mending that I have had on my to-do list for a while now finally done. I would love to know what your favorite of the, the batch was, or if there's anything that you kind of wish that I had shown. There's so many different mending techniques that I didn't even touch. Like, I want to know what your favorite is, because it's something that I may have never heard of and should check out. Also, if you are in the market for some new sheets to make your bed all comfy and cozy and lovely, then you should use my link down below for Brook Linen to get $20 off any order over $100 or use my code Morgan Donner. Get yourself some nice, cozy, comfy, and cute. And I also hope that you maybe think about embroidering or mending something that's been in your to-do list as well because I feel like even if you don't have anything to actually fix, it's really, really fun to add that personal decorative touch with embroidery to your clothing that just makes it feel more yours in a way that I think is really lovely. So right, have fun with whatever you're doing tonight. See you later.